Hi, I'm Bernard, better known as Military History Visualized. And today we're here at the Tank Museum at Bovington to record my top five tanks. So be sure, this is my personal choice and don't take any of this as a purchase recommendation. At number five, the M24 Chaffee. It comes with a 75mm gun, a 50 cal, and was designed by Cadillac. So a lot of freedom for such a small tank. Now the 75mm gun is special. It was actually designed for the B-25 Mitchell bomber. So it has less weight and a different recoil mechanism. This is why you can put it in a light tank and still have a free man turret. Now this is a late war design. So it's quite sophisticated. But at the same time, it didn't see much action in World War II, but also in Korea and Vietnam. In short, this small tank is small enough to hide in your garage, but packs a lot of firepower to deal with your pesky neighbors. This is why it's my number five. At number four, the KV-1, a heavy tank. Now this might look like an unsophisticated sledgehammer, but if you're dealing with the Wehrmacht in 1941, that might just be the thing you need. So it has a strong front armor and on the side. So the Germans actually renamed the 70-30 mm gun the Heeres Anklopfgerät, literally a door knocking device, because all the shots were bouncing off easily. Additionally, it packs a 76 mm gun. This means it could kill any German tank in 1941 with ease. In short, not the, ta not the tank to take out your high school prom date, but ideal for ambush around Stalingrad. At number three, the T-34 with the 76 mm gun. Now these are very rare nowadays. In World War II they were very common, but nowadays usually when you get a T-34, it's one with the 85 mm gun, which has a different turret. But I really prefer the one with the 76 mm gun. So if you have a museum where you can check it out, get there immediately. Now, this tank is definitely less crude than the KV-1. As you can see, it has sloped armor and it has wide tracks, so it has a higher tactical mobility and also a lower profile. So it created quite many challenge, challenges for the Panzerwaffe as well. In short, it's effective enough to deal with Panzers, it's crude enough for easy maintenance and it's cheap enough for the average middle-class household. So this is why this tank is at number three. At number two, definitely the opposite of cheap. The Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung E, or to be less precise, the Tiger. Now it comes with a strong frontal and side armor, and additionally it packs the famous 88 mm gun, which had a long range. Thus, in combination with good training, and great optics, this allowed the Tiger to kill every Allied tank at a range that most couldn't put a dent in its armor when it was introduced in 1942. Only about less than 1,500 were produced, but its reputation on the battlefield is quite significant. This is probably due to this combination of strong armor, good training, and a lot of firepower. Now it's also high maintenance, it requires a lot of logistics and high quality training, else it's just an expensive steel box. So in short, it's high maintenance, it's expensive, and people might think you're a bit overcompensating. But who cares, it's a freaking tiger. This is why it's my number two. At spot number one, the Panzerkampfwagen 3 Ausführung L, the one with the long barrel 50 mm gun. It has everything a tank needs. A free man turret, proper armor protection, a decent gun, and tactical and strategic mobility. Additionally, it looks great. It's not bloated like the Tiger. It has a nice profile, a center turret, and it's still boxy enough to give this Panzer Kampfwagen vibe. And remember, the Panzer III is the chosen one because it didn't choose the Stug Life. The Stug Life chose him. This was my top five. A big thank you to the Tank Museum at Bovington. If you like tanks, be sure to support them on Patreon and subscribe to the channel. And remember, you might not choose the Stork Life, but you can choose to visit the Stork here at the Tank Museum at Bovington. Now, if you have any positive comment comments, 
leave them here in the comment section. If you have any negative ones or complaints, be sure to drop by on my channel, Military is the Visualized, and leave them there. I'm happy to deal with them there. Thank you for watching and see you next time.